Hey everyone, I'm DQ Clark and this is your weekly Bible study parable on prayer for a good day. Each week I present a parable to you. We talk about the meaning, the interpretation, and how it can apply to your life. Let's get started. So the parable, there is a woman who had a set routine each morning. She would get ready a certain way each day, every single morning to make sure she didn't forget anything and that she and her family were prepared. She would wake up at about the same time every morning. She would let the dog out and then she would get coffee ready for her and her husband. She would then wake up each of her three kids who would proceed to get shower, get changed, and get ready for the day. Her husband would also get up at about this time and would get ready for the day. Meanwhile, she would make a hot breakfast like sausage and toast and eggs and pancakes and fruit and set it out for the breakfast table. She would line up all lunches that she had packed for the kids the night before on the counter and set her husband's briefcase by the front door. Her husband and her kids were usually ready and in the kitchen by now, so all of them would eat breakfast together and then the husband would take the kids to school while she got herself ready for the day. She would shower and change, do her hair and makeup, grab her work and head to work. She did this each and every morning and it always made the day feel great for everyone. She was prepared and energized for her morning slew of meetings. Her kids were alert and ready for school. The size of a lunch and snacks she packs got them through the day. And her husband always appreciated her thoughtfulness of leaving his briefcase right by the door so he could scoop it up when he was about to take the kids to school. One evening though, a friend came over and stayed a little longer than the woman would have liked, but she was hospitable and she entertained her friend. When she got up the next morning, she was a little more tired than she usually was. She did everything as she usually did, but she was a little more slow with breakfast, so her and her family couldn't eat together that morning. Her kids and her husband took the breakfast and ate it in the car. Funny thing was, something else happened that evening too. One of her kids' friend's parents stopped by to discuss a party for her child. The woman thought, it could have been sent in an email, an email would have sufficed, but she was hospitable and she entertained the friend. However, the next morning she was even more tired. She slept in a little bit later and the dog had an accident. There was no time to make breakfast because she had to clean it up. The kids and the husband grabbed protein bars for breakfast and money for lunch. The woman had forgotten to make the lunch because the friend stopped by and took up so much of her time. Funny thing was, something else happened that evening as well but this one had been planned. Her husband had a work dinner that she needed to attend with him and they got home really late. Not only did she forget to make lunches the evening before, but she slept in so much so that she forgot to take the dog out. She didn't get a chance to make breakfast. She wasn't able to set her husband's briefcase out by the door. She didn't get to see her kids and her husband before they left and she was almost late to work. And of course her husband forgot his briefcase that morning and he really needed it for a big meeting. So the woman had to rush get his briefcase to him to work, which actually did make her late from work, and she got a reprimand from her boss. That evening, she thought about all that had transpired that week. She thought about all the occurrences that came up. She noticed that her kids were a little bit more edgy and irritable. Her husband didn't seem as relaxed, and she herself was pretty cranky. She remembered the little occurrences that popped up each evening that week and how she had failed to follow her schedule. She was determined to get her schedule back on track so that her and her family would get back to a protected and a good place. So the interpretation. So you may be wondering, what does this parable have to do with prayer for a good day? Let me explain. So in the parable, the woman represents us, God's kids, both men and women. Her family represents our families, our people, our people in her inner circle. And her morning routine represents prayer. Each morning, she had a morning routine that she followed that set her and her family up for a good day. And this is the same with prayer. When we set ourselves up with prayer each morning, when we cover and protect our families, our loved ones, our friends, those in our circle of influence, those around us, when we provide that prayer for them and for us every single morning each day, we provide a layer of protection around them and around us to protect them from the attacks that the enemy may try and throw their way or our way that particular day. Scripture says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. And prayer is like that strong tower, a prayer in God's name. When we pray in Jesus' name, it's like we run to that strong tower and we find safety and protection for our day. The occurrences and situations that popped up each evening represent the different just attacks and small little darts the enemy will throw our way to distract us and get us 
off our prayer routine, just like it got the woman off her morning routine. The enemy hates it when we pray. When we invite God into our world, when we invite his help, the enemy is infuriated. So he throws small and seemingly insignificant distractions our way to get us off kilter and to keep us from praying. Notice that there were two unplanned events in the parable, but one planned event, and this will happen in life as well. Perhaps if the woman had thought ahead and realized that she had the planned event coming up that she needed to attend, she would have been quicker to guard her time regarding the unplanned events to protect her and her family's morning routine. And we have to consider this with prayer as well. There will be days, there will be mornings where we do have things that come up where we won't be able to spend as much time praying. So we need to guard the times that we do have to pray to prepare for those times where we may not have as much time to pray. So there are three key points I want you to take away with this parable. Number one, establish a daily morning prayer routine to cover you and your family. Use this time to seek God's help, to seek God's protection, to pray for you, your family, your friends, your circle of influence, and your day. Two, beware of distractions that would try to steal your time away from prayer. The biggest distraction of prayer is that teeny tiny little computer that fits in our pocket called a cell phone. <laughs> Those little pings can be irresistible sometimes. I'm completely guilty. Make sure you guard that time and use it for prayer. Number three, know that things will come up. It's just life and that's okay. You can always get right back into your prayer routine the next day if something does come up. Remember, it's not about legalism. It's about a relationship with Christ. It's about seeking him, spending that time with him first thing in the morning, seeing what he would say about your day and asking for his help and his protection. Now let me pray a prayer blessing over you as you go about your day. And feel free to use this prayer as an example of what you can pray for yourself and for your family over your day. Heavenly Father, we wanna thank you that this is the day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, you say that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. So today we run to that strong tower, Heavenly Father. We run into your name, Lord Jesus, and we thank you that we find safety and protection and your help for today. We need your help today, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your help today. You say that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So order our steps today, God. Please give us the words to speak at the very same hour that we need to speak them, Lord, in any situation we face today. Lord, please help us to renew our minds today and let the mind that is in Christ be in us. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for protecting us from the evil one and that nothing shall in any means harm us. Please open doors for us that no man can shut and close doors, Lord, that no man can open. And we thank you, God, that you are the way, the truth, and the life, and that you are leading us into all truth on this day. And Lord Jesus, please let us love others as you love them, for we can love because we were first loved by you. Lord, we thank you for your help, for your protection, for your ordered steps, for your ordered starts, for the words at the very same hour, for your favor, for your blessing, for your wisdom, for your knowledge, for your help today, Lord Jesus. We thank you that you have gone before us and will make crooked places straight. We thank you that you are with us, Lord, even until the ends of the earth. We thank you that you will walk through us this day and you are right by our sides. We give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. I've put together a list of prayers from the Bible that you can pray over yourselves and your loved ones. Declare these out loud, make them personal, pray them over yourselves, and pray them over your family and your friends as well. You can find that list in the description right down below. And as always, I list all scripture that I mentioned in this video right in the description down below. Take a look at those. I say this all the time, but read them for yourselves. It's great to hear a message, but when we read scripture for ourselves, God makes it personal to us and he illuminates and shows us things that are pertinent to our situations. It was so great spending this time with you guys. God loves it when we come to learn more about him, when we seek him more, when we want to learn who he is and learn his character. He loves that and he loves getting involved in our lives. If you enjoy the contents of this video, please subscribe to my channel. We do this every single week. I present a parable to you guys. We talk about the meaning, the interpretation, and how it can apply to your life. And thank you as always for giving this video a thumbs up and leaving a comment. Let me know what you thought and let me know if you have ideas for parables you'd like me to create short stories for in the future. Thanks so much for watching guys. Have an amazing week. God bless you and I'll see you next time.